Hello everyone, I'm Dhruv. I'm a, I'm a software engineer with the Market-based team at DigitalOcean. Hello, and my name is Boyan and I'm a senior server engineer on the App Platform team. Today, we're gonna to be talking about integrating Fluent Bit into our PaaS. When the context is a, a platform as a service, um, the challenges are different and hopefully we'll be able to go through some of them today. So as for the agenda, we are gonna first provide a context as to what our platform is and what are we working with. Uh, then uh, we would move towards internal logging, external logging, the issues which we faced and scope for future improvement. DigitalOcean app platform is a fully managed platform as a service that lets customers build, deploy, manage, and scale all kinds of different applications. These applications could be web apps, static sites, APIs, background workers, and in a different, of, a different number of languages, um, such as PHP, Python, Ruby, JavaScript, et cetera. Users can create applications via our cloud dashboard, command line tool, or API. Regardless of the mechanism used, the application ends up represented as a manifest specifying different components in the application. Each application may have one or more component. For example, an app may have an HTTP web API and a background worker. We take these components, stitch them together, build them and deploy them on our platform. App platform is built on top of existing DigitalOcean products. Primarily we are built on managed Kubernetes, container registry and spaces offering. But underneath we leverage almost all core infrastructure products. App Platform consists of numerous Kubernetes clusters in various digital ocean regions and data centers. We treat our clusters as cattle, not pets, and can reconfigure, destroy, and deploy new clusters as needed. At a high level, there is a core cluster reconciler component in our management control plane that's responsible for managing clusters in the data plane. Each cluster has several node poles. Some dedicated to running customer application workloads, some are dedicated to hosting application builds, and some host our internal in-cluster control services such as Prometheus, Istio, and Cilium. All the reconciliation is done programmatically using Go client libraries and the combination of template and manifests and Go code. Similarly, there is a control component responsible for managing the builds and deployments of actual customer applications. These are orchestrated completely dynamically as well as needed via Go client. Within each cluster, we need logging visibility for our in-cluster control components. These logs need to be ingested securely via WebSocket into a digital ocean central logging system in our main manage management control plane. We use Fluent Bit deployed as a daemon set within cluster to collect, process, and send logs into the central logging system. We use a custom WebSocket output plugin to send the logs. And this is an example of our custom WebSocket plugin configuration looks like. Uh, we have options to specify the endpoint and any additional headers, for example, the authorization bearer token. While we just covered internal logging, a different use case is where we want to send actual customer application logs to other logging systems. We want to support sending logs using syslog or HTTP protocols. Applications run in a secure, isolated, sandbox environment using the GYZ runtime. Fluent bit pods that perform the actual log collection and processing also need to run in the sandbox environment. We need dynamic and fine-grained control over logging configuration as applications change are deployed or reallocated around the cluster. For security and performance purposes, we need to be able to throttle and dynamically disable logging for applications. 
we also need to have detailed observability and insights into the health and metrics of different applications log uh, logging behavior for example we need to track how much logging data each app is outputting we need to know if logging is working and is healthy for a specific application we need to know the overall health of the logging system itself all of this needs to happen dynamically and programmatically as part of a normal application reconcile flow covered earlier for application log uh, for for application logging we choose to utilize fluent bit operator to orchestrate all the necessary components and configuration we deploy one instance of the fluent bit operator in each of the clusters the operator manages the fluent bit daemon set which controls the fluent bit pods on all the relevant customer workload uh, nodes as applications are deployed by the app reconciler discussed earlier input filter and output custom resources are created for each application and logging destination endpoints these custom resources get reconciled by the fluent bit operator into a secret containing the fluent bit configuration file this gets mounted to the fluent bit pods which then performs the actual log processing one initial problem which we had was that the fluent bit operator did not expose the go client we had to add the go client packages to op to the operator in order to use the custom resources programmatically this is an overview of a single applications logging pipeline we collect application logs using the tail input since we are running on container d we use the cri parser to parse the log records next we throttle the log processing we also use modify filter to set some additional application specific metadata to the log records and finally we route the records to the appropriate output based on the application's logging configuration so here is an example of an input configuration applications live in their own namespace which is determined by a unique identifier we have to be very specific about the input path we specify so we only correct the current running containers in the app's namespace we ensure we do not collect any kubernetes system logs and we tag the app very specifically so that we can control the routing by default the tail input uses input output notify system calls to collect data from log files as it is written to because both the application pods and the fluent bit pods run in separate gwiser environments the file system call restrictions imposed by gwiser make this type of log collection prohibitive and non functional fortunately fluent bit 8. fluent bit 1.8 came with a tail input plugin option to use stat watcher to collect log data which works around the sandbox issues the modify filter um is used to insert additional metadata into the log records these include the component name and the app name for outputs we match exactly the component within the app that needs to be that needs to get sent to the log destination for syslog output we enhance the transferred record with the enriched metadata values inserted in the modify filter these then can be parsed at the destination to associate logs with the actual app and components for nicer aggregation For monitoring all of this, we have some specific needs for detailed metric collection in the log processing pipeline. We need to be able to tell on a per component level how many log records and how much bandwidth has been processed. We need to be able to collect all the data, all of this data in the Prometheus exposition format, and we need to be able to co connect the metric values to specific application and customer identifiers. We would like to have a time series with metadata such as an app name, ID, and customer ID, like seen here. 
Zombit provides an API for exposing plugin metrics. However, the API is limited in the data it exposes. It only provides the name of the plugin. Furthermore, even when using an alias to uniquely identify plugins, the name exposed in the metrics API is truncated to 32 characters. Even UUIDs cannot fit nicely in the alias name. Ideally, we would like a solution similar to this, where we can specify the extra monitoring labels for the plugin, which then would be exposed in the monitoring API by Fluentbit. We've created a GitHub issue that hopefully can be addressed at some point in the near future. As a workaround, we dynamically generate Prometheus reporting rules for enhanced metric collection. This enables us to add automated metadata to the ingested metrics as, as they're scraped from the Fluentbit API. The name is a unique identifier for the plugin that we generate but that can fit in the alias field and connects metrics to app and customer IDs. This is a summary of some of the issues we've encountered when working with Fluentbit. The tail input plugin did not work under Gvisor and we had to use the disabled iNotify watcher option that only became available in 1.8. Dynamic configuration of Fluentbit within Kubernetes is still cumbersome and requires some workarounds. Uh, Fluentbit operator uses a custom process called Fluentbit watcher that watches for the changes within the configura configuration file and restarts the actual Fluentbit process when changes happen. The Fluentbit watcher also uses input output notify system calls, which do not work under JVisor in this context. So we had to add support for stat polling to Fluentbit watcher component within the operator to enable dynamic configuration within JVisor. As mentioned earlier, Fluentbit operator did not have Go client and we had to add it as well. Finally, uh, with some investigation, we found an issue where Fluentbit operator is using a lot of CPU rendering the configuration file into the secret. Uh, we had a fix for this and submitted a PR upstream. For some future work, we want to explore the native Fluentbit WebSocket plugin introduced in 1.7 and see if that can fit our needs like our custom one. Gvisor incurs a performance penalty when working with file system IO. We want to uh, investigate this further with respect to tail input plugin performance. Uh, additionally, we want to optimize the Fluentbit operator, operator. Fluentbit operator stores a single config file for all the Fluentbit daemon sets in a single Kubernetes secret. Data in Kubernetes secrets has one mabibyte size limit, which can be problematic if we store large amounts of configuration data. One relatively easy improvement might be to use compression such as gzip to shrink the configuration file. Additionally, we can try to fix this with some more work and to split the config files as they grow and rejoin them when they're read by Fluentbit pods. Finally, we would like to solve the metrics metadata relabeling the issue that we mentioned earlier for our monitoring functionality. Thank you, and we can answer any questions.